Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of my QR code rendering series. In this episode, we'll be picking up where we left off last time. In particular, we're going to focus on adding new shapes to our renderer. However, before we do that, we will be doing some maintenance that we left last time, uh, some fixing of code, some refactoring of code. I'll walk you through the whole process and I'll explain what I'm doing along the way. All right, let's get our dev server up and running, npm run dev. Let's also open that up in our browser. And here you can see the first issue, an issue that we left off last time. Uh, if you don't pass data, so if data is null, then this is going to be thrown. Rather than just patching that one issue, I'm actually going to make a bigger change to how we handle our payloads and how we validate things. So. Let's create this function, get payload. It's going to take a query and return a payload. You can see here, I'm just going to check if payload.data exists. So in other words, as long as it's, it's not falsy, uh, we'll return it. So you can't pass an empty string. You can't pass null. Awesome. Now, right at the top of our router.get, we are going to use it. We'll need to make sure we wrap it in a try catch because it will throw an error. And if it does throw an error, we are going to return a new response. This is a built in from Cloudflare. It's how we return re responses in Cloudflare. I'm going to use a JSON type here. And in order to do that, we first need to stringify a JSON object. And we're also going to need to set our headers. So we will set our headers to be content type application slash JSON. This will just instruct anyone who's consuming our API that this is JSON and you can parse it like JSON. All right, refreshing with our new code here and we get a JSON response, missing required parameter data. And adding our data here, you can see it's rendering. So this is great. Correct, let's move on. Okay, so just above get payload, let's create a new function. We'll call it parse color. This is just going to be responsible for taking a possible color and returning a color that is definitely a hex, and that should include the hash. So we'll use a regex here, fairly simple. We're just looking for uh, basically numbers that look like they could be a hex. So we're looking for six digits here, um, six hex digits and we are going to do a test against that regex. So if the color coming in does not uh, match it, so if, we, if there are no matches, then it means we have an invalid color and we're just gonna throw a new error. In this case, we'll just give the user a useful error message and continue on with our lives. Um, so just a note, um, you know, this may not perfectly suit your needs. I know hexes can also be three digits and I imagine you could probably pass them in uh, with alpha as well if you wanted. This obviously does not account for that. So keep that in mind. If you need to add more functionality here, you will definitely want to do that. Um, right now we're just adding on the hash if it if we didn't find it. So we just wanna make sure that anytime a color is passed in, even if it doesn't have the hash, we're gonna add it. And then down in our get payload, we are now checking, okay, if the payload has a color, so if a user passes a color in, we'll try to parse it out and set it onto the payload. Otherwise, we'll just use default black. So with this all working, our changes should now work and they do, awesome. And you should be able to test it as well by adding percent %23, which is the um, encoded hash. So that is what the URL encodes it to in order for it to be valid. And sweet, this is all working. So next up, I realized that I missed a lot of my comments. So I'll quickly go through here and re-add them. Um, feel free to follow along, but I'm gonna speed the video up. Uh, it's just commenting and typing, so pretty straightforward. This is a good time for me to mention, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you comment below if you wanna see any custom shapes added in the next videos to this series. Okay, we're on the last step of our cleanup here. We will take all of our logic, lines 79 to 103, 
And just above our router.get, we are going to create a new function, render QR code. This will take a payload and it's of course going to return our response. I'll quickly type that out here. Okay, now we just need to make sure we call that and we'll need to also make sure we call it properly. You'll see I have an error here in a second. Um, bad job. So we'll fix that error. We'll make sure we call it. Let's make sure we also test everything to see if it all works. Uh, so data works, change it, should change the QR code. Changing the color should work as well. Um, so let's try this all out. Yeah, okay. So finally, we can move on to something more interesting, and that is rendering different shapes. So you can see on line 90 and 91 here, I'm highlighting. Uh, I'm just going to comment them out because we are going to try a new shape. We're going to do a circle. Now, circles in SVG are slightly different than rectangles. Rectangles use X and Y, and that is the top left of the rectangle. That's the coordinate. However, circles use CX and CY. That's the center X point and the center Y point. So just note, as I'm coding this out, we're going to have to do a little bit of translation here um, to make sure that not only do we use the X and Y coordinates, but we also use the block size. And actually, we're going to use block size divided by two. Or in other words, we are going to translate by the radius. Uh, this is a pretty common if you're working with any kind of graphics rendering, rendering circles. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and add that all in. We'll obviously need to set the R, which is radius, to block size divided by two. Cool. So if we render this, it should work. And it does. Look at that. Um, now we're rendering circles. Okay, so last shape. Let's do a diamond. Now, SVG, there are so many different ways we could actually render a diamond. We could do this with a path. We could just rotate a rectangle 45 degrees. Instead, we'll use a polygon um, and we'll use four points. We'll start the points at the top and we'll work our ways clockwise. So it'll go top. Uh, right, bottom, left. Um, yeah, and we'll just need to make sure that we double check our code at the end. Um, this is pretty easy to make a mistake. So let's let's go ahead and speed things up, see if we can do it. All right, this is the finished polygon. You can see it rendered. Um, we'll flatten this down onto a single line in a moment, but what we need to do now, what I want to do now, is figure out a way to use query parameters so that we can decide which shapes we actually want to render. So we're going to start this out, line 90. Let's add a let shape, and we'll assign to this later. It's going to be a string. And we are going to call our parameter payload.shape. So when someone passes shape in the query parameters, we, we're going to detect that. And we're going to use these three values here. So we got circle, we got diamond, and we got square. And at the bottom here, you'll see me putting out um, a default as well. So square will be the default. We'll fall through to it. This is pretty common with a switch, switch uh, statements. And so we'll just set set things up so that we don't make a mistake. Um, I'm getting all the shapes ready here um, where I'm going to set the shape. And yeah, and now all we have to do is some copy pasting. Uh, I did a format here. I didn't I haven't formatted until then, but it's just cleaned things up a little bit and fixed all my formatting mistakes. So let's paste on circle. We'll paste on our rectangle to the bo to the bottom shape there and we'll just need to reformat our diamond. Take special care when you're reformatting this. The coordinate pairs, so each X and Y is separated by a comma, and then each pair of X and Y coordinates needs to be separated by a space. And you'll know if you screw it up if the shape breaks. So just make sure once you put it on a single line, you'll probably want to save it, double check that. Okay, now we'll assign the shape uh, for the diamond to our polygon and we just need to make sure that we push that shape into our blocks. So blocks.push shape. And here we go. 
we are now getting our default square. And if we add a an extra parameter, um, we have definitely broken something. Um, but you'll need to use an ampersand, not another question mark. And now we have a circle and diamond should work as well. Should test that. And there we go. We are finished our three shapes and we are finished for this video. Uh, if you liked this, make sure you've liked, subscribed, commented, um, and please stay tuned for next time where we are going to look at how to render some different shapes for our finders. Uh, the finders are those things in the, in the corners. We'll figure out a system for rendering something a little cooler. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.